In this video, we will show you how to replace your downstream O2 sensor on this Ford Fusion. You'll have two of these. We'll show you the one that's harder along the backside of the engine. The front O2 sensor is out in the open, at the front of the engine. The rear O2 sensor will require more steps to be removed. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. To gain access to the O2 sensor, it's going to be easiest if you remove your right front wheel. With that said, safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, remove all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. With the wheel out of the way, we're going to start gaining access inside of this area. To make our way in, we'll dislodge this plastic panel just along the rear of the knuckle here. You don't have to completely dislodge the whole thing along the forward aspect of the knuckle. Use a trim tool for this. You can also use a flat blade screwdriver. Just go ahead and carefully pull out the center of each one of these push clips holding it in place. When you have that dislodged, you should be able to pull out the outer portion as well. Go ahead and give that push pin a quick inspection. Make sure it is still reusable. We'll set that aside and do the same to the next push pin. Take hold of the plastic panel and set it aside. With that out of the way, you have a clear view of your downstream O2 sensor right in this area. The first thing you'll want to do is disconnect the wiring harness. What you'll find is if you were to follow that wiring harness, it comes all the way up behind this area. So you're going to have to carefully reach your arm up inside there to disconnect it. If you find you have a hard time reaching your arm up inside this area, you could disconnect the outer tie rod end from your steering knuckle. A quick note about that is if you did dislodge the outer tie rod end from the knuckle, you should also get your alignment checked when you're done. When removing the tie rod, you're typically going to find that you'll have a locking cotter pin. Go ahead and remove that, set it aside. It's a good idea to go ahead and replace these. Generally, they're rotted. Yep. Use a 17 millimeter to remove the mounting nut. Give that a quick inspection. Start it back on the tie rod end, just a couple threads here. Continue on to separating the tie rod end from the knuckle. To do this, we'll be using some vibration. You could also use a tie rod end removal tool. I'll just use my hammer here, being careful not to damage the tie rod end in any way. At this point, we can make our way in here to where the O2 sensor wiring harness is. Follow it up to its mounting point. We'll dislodge it from this area and then continue following it up to its connection point, a little bit further up, up above the power steering pump. Let's try to pry this out of place here without damaging anything. Now for the connector, it's a little bit harder to see. I'm just going to carefully follow the wiring all the way up to its connection point here. Generally up along the top of the connector is where the locking tab will be. Squeeze on that tab and disconnect the electrical connector. Give each end a quick inspection for corrosion. Use an O2 sensor socket to remove the O2 sensor from your exhaust pipe. Once you have that broken free, continue on by removing it by hand. There it is, friend. Continue on to cleaning and inspecting the mounting point on your exhaust pipe. We'll use some sandpaper for this. Just give it a light scuff.
Before we install our new O2 sensor, let's have a quick look at the original. We do have that center mounting point for the wiring harness. This is typically a single time use. You generally want to replace it. Otherwise, at least go ahead and trim it off and then we'll be using a wire tie to hold this in place. Let's use some cutters on this. Trim that off of there. Okay, let's get ready for the installation of our brand new downstream O2 sensor. Pay attention down at the bottom here, you have the threaded area which will go into the exhaust pipe. Make sure it has some anti-seize on there, but you never want to have the anti-seize on the sensing agent down in this area. At this point, we'll continue on with taking this started in by hand. Snug it up. After that, torque it to 35 foot-pounds. Once you have that torqued, we'll continue on with our center bracket here. I got a brand new wire tie. We'll be taking that wire tie and slide it right on through that hole where the original wire tie went through. Now we'll take this and we'll put it onto the cable here. We're not going to make it tight because we do need to make sure we know exactly where it needs to be. Now we'll take that connector and safely reach up inside the engine compartment to reconnect it. This just requires a little bit of patience here. There it is. Let's press it in. Listen for a click from that. We'll give it a little tug to make sure it's completely secured in place. Now let's secure that wiring harness. We'll get this bracket in place. Just slide it right on there. At this point, you want to make sure that you center that wiring harness so that there's no way of the wiring getting caught on anything. Once you have that adjustment, go ahead and tighten up your wire tie and trim off the access. Double check to make sure that's completely secured. Let's have one last look and double check to make sure everything is tight and secured as it needs to be. Once you've done so, re-secure your plastic panel. Let's reinstall the outer tie rod end. We'll put this in position, start on the nut, bottom it out, torque that to 35 foot-pounds. If you find that your tie rod end stud spins on you while you're trying to tighten the nut, apply pressure underneath the tie rod end. Once that's tight, install a locking cotter pin. Slide it through the hole and peen it over so there's no way that this nut can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Double check to make sure everything's secure and now we can reinstall our wheel. We'll get the wheel in position. Start on all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. Bottom them out. Get the wheel back on the ground, and then you can torque each of these to 100 foot-pounds. With the wheel on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. Torqued. Okay, friends, we've got the vehicle back together. At this point, you want to go ahead and start it up. Let it run for a little while. Make sure you have no running condition, no check engine light, and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.